to um, Engagement Live. Thank you all so much just for joining us. I'm gonna let I'm gonna give you all a few minutes just to uh, get in here. Make sure you share this with your network. Um, I'm very excited to have with us Apostle Ryan Lestrange. Um, God has been doing some amazing things um, through him. Um, we've seen it all over uh, social media. Uh, essentially, that's just kind of the context in the world we live in today is social media. So we've had the privilege of watching God do some great and wonderful things um, through him um, as an apostolic uh, trendsetter, as one who has the ability to birth individuals out and into uh, their next phases and purposes in life. So we're very, very excited. Again, welcome to Engagement Live. We're in preparation for our 27th annual Apostles and Prophets Conference at the Life Center. And this year, the theme is called Engagement. We are set to engage this culture um, through all seven mountains of influence. So however we need to do that, we are uh, putting ourselves and posturing ourselves and positioning ourselves to be able to do so. So we're excited to have Apostle Estrange with us. Again, I'm gonna give you a few more uh, minutes or seconds to share this with your network. Let everyone know that we are here live with Apostle Ryan Lestrange, and we're just gonna hear what the Lord is saying. He's gonna tell us a little bit about himself, how he got started in ministry. Hey, how are you doing, Melissa? Um, please share this with your network. Um, we really, we really do believe that this conference is going to be a conference that is going to change the trajectory of so many lives. We already are um, capped out as it relates to our VIP registration, so that's a beautiful thing. Um, our registration is still going and going. Um, we have group registration; groups are registering, and so we want you to take advantage of that, especially if you're in the southeast region or the Atlanta area. We want you to be present not just for the night sessions, the day sessions, God is going to be doing something marvelous, something great, something spectacular. So again, again, we're so excited now that we got a, a pretty decent group right here. Uh, my name is Tantale Walters. I, they call me T. I am the marketing director for the Life Center Ministries, and I'm here just to interview Apostle Ryan Lestrange, but he's going to be doing most of the talking. Y'all going to see him most of the time, but Apostle, I am so very excited that you said yes to us that you allowed us to um, take this time. Your time is very valuable and we honor that. Um, we're, we're thankful that you just, you know, you're saying yes to this opportunity and you're gonna change lives, we already know it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I do know that you are uh, the apostle who is over the Tribe Network. And of course you're over Ryan Lestrange Ministries, but tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, how this even happened? How did you become who you are today? Wow. Well, first of all, I'm excited to be with you. I love uh, the Life Center there in Atlanta. I have watched the hand of God on that center and on your apostles uh, for a number of years. So the fact that you just said, I think it's the 27th uh, yeah. Apostles and Prophets Gathering, that in and of itself is amazing. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, as far as me, you know, I was not raised in the church. I was uh, raised, my family was actually Catholic. And uh, we were like once a year, twice a year, maybe uh, going to church. And I didn't hear the gospel of Jesus Christ until I was in my teens. And I had an uncle who had been addicted to drugs very heavily and he had a radical deliverance and salvation encounter. Now, in our family, we didn't understand salvation. We didn't understand deliverance. That was not in our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So he began to take me to church, and I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. No experience with God saved. Uh, the Lord then called me into ministry, and he sent me to Bible school. I was only 17 when I started that journey into Bible college, and I'd already been through a lot. You know, people hear my story. They say, well, you were saved very young. It's true, but I was also raised in a lot of darkness, uh, a lot of addiction, a lot of bondage. So already the enemy had planted a lot of seeds in my life, and when I went to Bible college, I really went there seeking deliverance, seeking help, and I got that, and then the Lord called me into uh, the apostolic ministry. And at that time, I didn't know what that was. Uh, I did, had never read a book about that, didn't know anybody that taught about it. You know, we were kind of of the mindset at that time that apostles were maybe missionaries, maybe people that were sent to foreign lands. And so when Jesus started speaking to me about this, 
I had no grid for it, no context for it. And it really would take years uh, before I would begin to uh, start having the unveiling in my own mind, my own heart about apostolic and then later prophetic ministry. And it became a game changer for me as I began to really dive into those two layers of the apostolic and the prophetic. And one of the ways that that started happening for me as God called me to a very rural area in Virginia to begin to plant churches. And, you know, when you're planting churches in an area that's small, uh, an area where maybe there's a lot of non-spirit-filled churches or denominational churches, uh, it's, it's a labor, you know, to start to talk about apostles and prophets and all these sort of things. And so my wife and I were a part of planting three churches in that area. We led two of them for a number of years, and then God started to call me to travel. I was always traveling some, but God started calling me to travel as my dominant thing. And so we ultimately raised up sons and daughters, uh, handed those ministries over to them, began to travel, began to build the tribe apostolic network. We're now building something called the iHubs movement, which is going to be more of a church planting apostolic hubs uh, mm -hmm. kind of movement. And we've got some major plans for the nations and for America to plan, uh, plant more apostolic prophetic kind of work. So that's a little bit of my background. I could probably talk more about <laughs> that. But that gives you a, a, a sense of where I came from and how I got here. I, Apostle, that is, that's awesome. Um, I heard you say that when you were doing the ministries that you would, um, <clears throat> when the Lord started calling you to travel, you went ahead and handed those off to your sons and daughters. Um, being an apostle today, uh, 21st century, you know, 2018, you know, it's a fan, it's like a fad. It's like a famous thing. It's like, we hear it all the time. Oh, I'm an apostle. And it's like, where are your fruit? Where's your churches? You know, what, what are you actually doing in that nation? And what are you doing to affect change? You know, we have all types of apostles. We have governmental apostles. We have apostles that have the ability to, ch to change the economy. We have apostles that have the ability to transition churches and to, you know, to plant and to move and and so forth. Um, apostle, again, a, as I stated in a lot of our advertisement, we have dimed you or have tagged you as the birthing apostle based upon what we've seen you do. And you alluded to that by birthing churches and then handing them over to your sons and daughters. And I think that's an amazing thing. That's not something you see a lot. Um, what you see a lot in the church is either I'm going to hold on to what's mine or, you know, I'm not going to give these sons and daughters opportunity. I'll make them work just as hard as I had to work. Um, could you kind of speak towards that? What happened in, I guess, the heart of you or what made you go in that direction? Was it simply just I'm just going to be obedient to God? And here if he told me to give this this church that I planted over to this son or to this daughter, I'm just going to do it. Um again, at, we, we deemed you as the birthing apostle. What, what happened in your life that made you care or made you have this type of heart towards uh, the body of Christ where you're like, you know what, there, there is a need for apostolic leadership in this region or that region, and I'm going to make sure that it's followed out. Can you talk to us about that whole birthing process while you were birthing the churches and then handing them over to someone who was capable of picking up the mantle that you left there? Sure. Well, you know, I looked at Paul and Timothy was one example. And Paul says to Timothy uh, more than once to Timothy, my true son. And I studied Ephesus, you know, Paul, uh, really Paul's greatest achievement as far as building a church was the church that emerged in Ephesus. And when Paul wrote the words that I'm standing at an effectual door, the word effectual there is mega. One of the words that I released over 2018 was not a deep word. You know, sometimes right. people get upset with me because say my <laughs> words are not deep enough. I tell people I'm I'm not Spanish. I don't speak uh, I'm not Hispanic. I don't speak Spanish. I'm not Russian. I don't speak Russian. I speak English. So God gives me a lot of English words. I like words. I'm a writer. I'm an author. I'm a thinker. I like words. And actually the Greek word there, mega, that was the word about a mega door. And if you study that, that door was speaking about influence in the entire city of Ephesus. Now, I believe that Paul was not just building a church as we would define a church, but Paul was building actually a kingdom center that would literally reshape wow. the 
very foundation of the city. And Paul, upon his death, had handed the, most of those works over. And Timothy really took this on, and it evolved to become uh, really the most prominent work in that century at that time. Um, so I looked at things like that. I looked at the fact that in the garden, God never created a ministry, a network, a structure, an organization, but he created a family. And so once you understand family, you understand sonship, you understand daughters, that we're sons and daughters of God. Then we understand the concept of spiritual mothers, fathers. We understand that part of the apostolic labor is an inheritance. And it's not something that you can do by the flesh. You know, it's interesting because one of the churches I planted, I had a spiritual son that I was convinced would take that church on. And I had said to him, I believe you'll take this church on. And it was something we had discussed. And at the time when I began to get ready to hand it over, the Lord said to me, he's not ready for that responsibility. And he told me to hand it to another son who actually came on the scene much later. And it seemed like a very unfair decision. But I knew in my spirit it was the right decision that this uh, had the ability to really keep it going. And so I did that. And it was really, really, really uh, extremely, uh, there was extreme amount of warfare because people looked at that decision. They said, it's not fair. We thought it was going this way. It's going that way. But one of the things about apostles and apostolic leaders is they should have been encountered by Jesus as the head of the church. Ephesians 1 22 said, and they should be radically obedient to the Lord. You see yeah. repetitiously in Paul's life, he won't go where God doesn't send him. And so as I began to look at those things, I began to realize part of our labor as apostles is we are definitely going to birth things and initiate things that other people are going to then take to the next level. Um, and I believe one of the things the Lord is doing now prophetically, you talked a little bit, I don't remember what you said, but you talked about the church and the kingdom. And I just wrote mm -hmm. that I'm a terrible artist, but I drew this out very <laughs> quickly. Um, I think you can see it. Wow. So in yes. the past, you know, we thought of apostles as only you have to plant a church. Now, I would still say probably the dominant apostolic flow we see is within the church world. But we've had revelation of what we call the seven mountains uh, and the different mountains of society, of culture. And the apostolic, the prophetic is now beginning to dominate those mountains. And I believe we're moving from just a church within the four walls concept into a kingdom concept. And so yeah. we're going to begin to see the penetration yeah. of the apostolic and the prophetic upon these seven mountains. So it's not going to be uncommon to see apostles in the marketplace, prophets in the marketplace, apostles in media. I believe there's many in media that have an apostolic anointing to birth, to initiate, to govern. Now, I'm not saying that any of that replaces this, the assembly right. of ourselves together for fellowship, training, instruction. I would say this. I would say that this wineskin has got to be upgraded and updated. Right now, we're living in an age where the, the structure of the church is going to change. And even younger apostles, even millennial apostles that have come from very traditional systems that have difficulty embracing new methodologies, if they don't open up, and this is why we need prophets, because prophets give voice to new things. We're in the eighth month. That in the month of new beginnings, it's the month of new things. God is birthing and initiating new things. Prophets always speak new things. They have wow. the spirit of revelation. Apostles have the spirit of implementation. Revelation, wow. implementation. There's going to be a wineskin change. You know, I was um, at Ooh. Patricia King's ministry in Arizona, and Patricia has built something so interesting to me that she has a building that's relatively small. A few hundred people on Sunday morning uh, come there to the service, but she literally has a church that is built through the Internet of about 10,000 people. And wow. I believe those kind of wineskin updates yes. are things we've got to look at now. So the apostolic, the prophetic is really in a place of expansion and God is stretching our mindsets at this engagement conference. One of the things that I intend to unpack during the daytime is strategies, apostolic prophetic strategies. What's the word yes. of the Lord about strategies? We cannot... Mm. Wow. Oh my gosh. You still there? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm sorry. I think it froze just a minute. Yep. But that, that was just what I wanted to say and answer to the question. We've got to have upgraded, updated strategies. Apostle, I mean, that is exactly where we're going. And what you said about 
uh, Patricia King, um, her having a lot, about 10,000 members virtually and knowing that this is the direction of the Lord. This is the direction that we're going. I, my brother and I, we talk often about um, the apostle, the apostles and what they would be doing right now today. And we've all come, we always come to the conclusion that they will be using the technology that we're using to win people to, uh, to the Lord. They, they will be using the technology to gather and to galvanize the mission of the kingdom and to make sure that kingdom, the kingdom of heaven does reside here on the earth. And technology is one of the tools that we're using. So you're absolutely correct where you are going to see apostles in media. You're going to see uh, prophets and apostles in the marketplace. You're going to see prophets and apostles, um, young and um, and senior, raising up uh, whole bodies via social media. And they will be legit, not something that you know, it's just like uh, barely hanging on, no legitimacy. There's no covering, nothing like that. No, literally people's lives are going to be changed. We saw it happening, you know, years ago where you had online church, but it's much bigger than online church. People are now being um, uh, being covered and they are now being fed and they are now being um um, commissioned out through these uh, means and through these sources. I think this is an awesome and wonderful uh, thing that will be happening. You specifically saying that you're going to be talking about strategies. Um, that's one of the main things that that we bring up often. People will always tell us, here's the problem or here's um, here it is. This is what we need to do, but we don't know how to do it. So I'm telling you right now, if you have not registered, you need to register yes. because this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the answer and the process in which you know it's going to take for you to do everything that God has called you to do. As Apostle uh, Ryan said, you know, prophets they go ahead and they give you, you know, this is the word of the Lord. And apostles they give you the instruction, they give you the plan, the the whole layout as to this is how this is going to happen, the implementation. This is what's going to take place. Um, wow, what you said was so rich. I'm gonna have to go back and replay it and replay it and replay it again. It was very very rich. Um, you also are an author. And um, one of the latest books that I've seen, I know, I believe that you're writing another one that's supposed to release in 2019 or something like that. Yes. Um, but the one that really caught my attention a while ago was uh, Hell's Toxic Trio. Um, I think that has a big role to play in uh, the stagnancy that we see in the body of Christ um, as it relates to launching out and just moving forward and doing what it is that God has called you to do. And I'm pretty sure you have sons and daughters that get stuck. You know, and, and you find out, well, this is what's really going on in your life. Can you talk to us a little bit about that book and how that has a huge role in us invading and engaging this culture? Because if we don't get that part straight, uh, we're not going to be effective. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, this book really talks about three demons that I've preached about for years. Uh, the Jezebel spirit, the religious spirit and the Python spirit. And yeah. I lumped these three demons together because uh, they're anti-anointing spirits. First, John says there are many anti-Christ present in the world now at this time. Right. The word Christ is not the last name of Jesus. It means right. the anointed one and his anointing. So yeah. John was looking prophetically and saying, look, even right now, there are many spirits and many people operate on the influence of these spirits that the goal is to bind, hinder, and quench the anointing. Now, right. one thing the devil hates, the devil hates the anointing. Many times when people have gotten stagnation in their life, when people have uh, grown complacent, when people are weary, sometimes when people are just oppressed. And there's an oppression and they've, they've studied, they've prayed and it won't break. They need the anointing. The anointing is an accelerating force of heaven. It's an enabling force of heaven. God never sent one person to do anything without anointing them. So every time you're sent, you are anointed. That's why uh, meetings like this, I mean, I don't even know fully what's going to happen. I know the Lord's been speaking to me about unusual. I feel like I'm going to be coming to Atlanta on the night service with a mantle and a mandate to to birth the unusual. I believe we're going to stir the miraculous realm, the breakthrough realm. I believe that we're going to see the power of God in demonstration and activation. Uh, we're going to see the anointing. There is an anointing. I believe all apostles carry an anointing, a breakthrough, the Micah 2, 13 anointing, because apostles are sent to ground to break it open. They're yeah. sent to mountains to break it open. They're sent to territories to break it open. Again, what, who is the power partner of of apostles, prophets. So these three demons, the Python spirit, 
the Jezebel spirit, the religious spirit comes to confine and bind up the progress of the ecclesia, the people of God. And so I really felt, I preached on this for years, but it was like God just quickened me and said, it is the time to write this book. And mm -hmm. one of the things, especially when I was writing the passage on the religious spirit, I began to read some of the old writings of C. Peter Wagner and others that were talking about uh, breaking the religious spirit corporately. It's wow. one thing for you wow. personally to say, I'm not going to be bound by religion anymore. But right. many, many times we think because we're prophetic, well, I'm just going to decree against it. It's broken. But to really break it off a people group, it takes more than just prayer. It takes reformation yes. and thinking. It takes repentance. It takes teaching. And so I really write some strategies and some battle plans in those books. And then the Python spirit, I feel like the, the two serpent demons, the Python spirit and the Leviathan spirit have been in particularly trying to influence the prophetic and prophets in this hour. And so I wrote from that dimension. I had one prophet that read the book and he said, you know, I don't really think it's as much of a warfare book as it is kind of a prophet's manual to help yeah. prophetic people overcome. And I believe that's the heart of the Lord for this season. The enemy hates the anointing because it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that sets people free. And I just want to say this. I want to say for everybody watching, I believe there are key cities. I believe there are key meetings. You know, Apostle John Eckhart prophesied that there, there would be glory gatherings. And I'm seeing this increasingly yes. in our conferences and conferences we host uh, or, or go and attend and preach out with other people. That the conferences that God has initiated, there's a unique anointing on these conferences. I believe two things about this particular engagement gathering. I believe, number one that Atlanta and the Atlanta metro area and then out into the suburban area, I believe that it is literally a hub of spiritual governance and activity. And I believe we're going to see over the next decade uh, an acceleration and a growth in Atlanta that is going to literally be unparalleled and unprecedented. Already the media voices are moving to Atlanta. Yes. There are going to be yes. many ministers that continue to move into the Atlanta area. And it's going to be to accelerate the plans and purposes. God says, my eyes, my attention is upon Atlanta, that Atlanta is becoming a prophetic and apostolic heart center in this nation. The Lord says, be not surprised that there is convergence happening in the region of Atlanta for my glory and my light is shining upon that region, says the Lord. And I believe out of this gathering, there's going to be an acceleration there's going to be a breakthrough. And it's interesting to me because even the speakers, myself, uh, Chuck Pierce, Dr. Matthew Stevenson, uh, Mark Sharona, and the others, uh, the, uh, Catherine Sykes, the, uh, I think they just added Apostle Yolanda Stiff, of the mm -hmm. other different speakers. There is such a diversity of streams. And yeah, I believe yeah, this yeah. is a picture of what God wants to do. And so I really encourage you that are mm -hmm. watching, if you can get to this conference, go to prophetsandapostles.org. There is a group registration for five or more. And just, just get there. You know, if you feel the story and say, man, I feel heaven on this, just get there. Because something significant is going to happen. Now, let me just say this. You're not going to take no more of your time, but you just need a whole other weight a whole nother weight on what's going to happen. I heard, I hope you all heard Apostle Ryan Lestrange, what he just said about Atlanta and our region. You know that this is the word of the Lord because we've heard this. We've heard uh, similar words to it um, concerning, especially events that we have. When we had Limitless, we heard a, a word very similar to that. So God is really, he is really bringing those who are in uh, areas of influence in the apostolic arena together in order to make sure that this actually is followed through and this actually happens. So we're so very excited. Again, Apostle Strange, thank you so very much for your time. Everyone, I hope you heard what he said. If you did not hear from the beginning, please catch the replay. We will make sure that this stays up. Um, you've got to go register. Uh, I, I mean, again, we are at 
um, are uh, uh, we are at a good place in registration. What I will say to you, you want to register because you want to see inside. You don't want to be in the overflow. So you want to register as soon as possible. Um, we're excited and we believe that God is going to do something uh, just spectacular, especially with all the apostles that are going to be coming to the Atlanta area at that one time. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be bananas. Apostle, thank you again so very much. You all, thank, thank you for you. hanging in there with us. Again, go to prophetsandapostles.org and you will be able to register, um, what, register your groups. We do have group registration that has been happening. Um, bring your churches, bring your other apostolic leaders. If you're an apostle, bring your sons and your daughters. This is something that you want to be a part of. All right, so thank you all so very much. We're gonna leave now, um, but you can go back and watch the replay and hear all this uh, wonderful um, information that Apostle Lestrange has provided for us. And it's, I do believe it's something that you can take into your prayer closet and really chew on and allow the Lord to really bring revelation out of what he has said, because it does affect you. You wouldn't be on here if it did not affect you. God brought you here to this broadcast to hear the word of the Lord concerning your life and your connections uh, with um, the Atlanta area and as well as this conference. God bless you all. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you later on this week with uh, a few of our other speakers that will be with us this year. All right. God bless y'all.